Today marks 79 years since the attack on Pearl Harbor. December 7, 1941, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt called it a date which will live in infamy. Hundreds of Japanese bombers attacked the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard in Hawaii, sinking or damaging dozens of ships from the U.S. Pacific Fleet, including the USS Arizona, which lost more than 1,100 crewmen. More than 2,400 Americans were killed in that attack, and some 1,100 more were wounded. The attack drew the United States into World War II. And like most events this year, the annual ceremony marking Pearl Harbor attacks was very different due to the pandemic. No big crowds, no veterans, only a handful of dignitaries took part in a mostly virtual ceremony, which started at 7.55 this morning in Hawaii, the same time 79 years ago that the attacks began. Today we honor the sacrifice of the service members and civilians who fought the opening battle of America's entry into World War II, setting the example of perseverance and paving the way for service above and beyond the call to serve. The U.S. military streamed today's ceremony live online for survivors and others unable to attend in person. Among the hundreds who survived the attack on the USS Arizona that fateful day, only two are still alive. 99-year-old Lou Contour reflected on that moment in history with News Nation reporter Doug Johnson. Every one of us did their job well. There wasn't one person on the ship that didn't do his job the way he was trained. 99-year-old Louis Contour, who just goes by Lou, had been in the Navy for two years on December 7, 1941, as he served as a quartermaster third class on the battleship USS Arizona. For whenever in and out of port, I steered the ship in and out of port. Lou had just turned 20 years old two months earlier and says the Arizona arrived in Pearl Harbor the afternoon of Friday the 5th. Today, he claims when he saw the first Japanese planes attacking over Oahu that Sunday morning, he was not all that surprised. He knew that something was going to happen long before that. We'd been training for it for a year and a half. At the time, Lou was near the back of the ship. When a Japanese bomb penetrated the Arizona's forward turrets, causing a massive explosion. Uh, the fire was all around the ship where the oil was. But despite the flames, Lou stayed on board for 30 minutes after that bomb hit, with other sailors to rescue crewmen who were badly burned. We got everybody into the motor launches, got them to the hospital, and of course we fought the fire until Tuesday until they got out. In the days after, Lou returned to the Arizona several times diving into the wreckage to recover the bodies of the 1177 sailors who died as a result of the bombing. I'm no hero. I don't blame myself as a hero. I just did my job and did what was, had to be done to protect America and the American flag. After the attack, Lou stayed in the Navy for the rest of the war, later becoming a pilot and flying in the VP-11 Black Cat Patrol Bombing Squadron. That's the one we flew. While serving in the Pacific Theater, he was shot down twice. It helped rescue 219 Australian coast watchers from Upper New Guinea behind the lines of the tribes. After the war, he stayed in the Navy until 1967, retiring as a lieutenant commander. In 1991, during the 50th anniversary, Lou went to Hawaii and met then-President George H.W. Bush. Lou was going to Hawaii this year as well, but COVID-19 changed that. However, he has every intention of going to Pearl Harbor for the 80th anniversary in 2021. And my doctor says we're keeping you alive till you're 100, I'll be 100 next September. Cause we're all going with you for the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. So here I am, just living it out. Doug Johnson, News Nation, Sacramento.